So in this video, we're going to talk about one-sided junctions. And first, we're going to talk about PN junctions, because those are the most familiar to us thus far. Uh, but second, we're going to talk about general one-sided junctions. And what I mean by general one-sided junctions will be clear by the end of the video. Uh, but this is useful, particularly in MOSFETs uh, and Schottky diodes where we have a depletion region, but it's not, it doesn't have a companion um, side to it. So it's, it's literally only a one-sided region. Um, so we're gonna start out with a PN junction just because that's what we know well. So we know a PN junction is gonna look something like this. It's got a P side and an N side. It's got a bunch of positively charged donors on the right-hand side and a bunch of negatively charged acceptors on the left hand side. And we know that this depletion region is going to have a certain width. So it's going to have a width on the P side, which we called XP. And it's going to have a width on the N side, which we called XN. And in general, these widths are going to be functions of the doping. But what happens when the doping on one side so let's say the doping on the P side, uh, the doping gets really high. So let's say, for example, that the doping here is 10 to the 19 uh, acceptors per centimeter cubed, and the doping on the N side is only 10 to the 15 per centimeter cubed. Then what is the, what is the depletion region going to look like? Uh, well, if we, we know that the charge on each side must be equal, so uh, the charge in the depletion region on the P side must be equal to the charge on the N side. That's just charge neutrality because the semiconductor overall is neutral. And if we have an abrupt depletion region, then we know that the total charge or the charge um, per unit area um, on each side is going to be the width, just the width of the depletion region times the density of the charge. Uh, and same for the N region. All right, that should be Xn times Nd. And so we know that the total depletion width W is just Xn plus Xp, because we're interested in, typically we're interested in the total width W. Uh, but in this case, we can write, we can just rewrite this as Xn plus uh, xn, so if we solve this equation for xn, it's just, um, or if we solve this equation for xp, it's just xn times the ratio of doping, nd over na. And in this case, this ratio is like 10 to the minus four. Uh, so xn plus xn times 10 to the minus four. So approximately the entire depletion width is just due uh, to Xn. Now things get even more interesting when we don't have a PN junction anymore. So let's say we've got a similar structure uh, with n-type material over here. But let's say instead of being n-type, this is a metal. And let's say that we somehow manage to put uh, a bunch of negative charges on this side of the metal. And for now, let's say that they're, they're mobile charges. Actually, no, let's, let's make this more realistic. Let's make, these, uh, let's make these mobile charges. So within the metal, these charges can move around. And because of that, they're all concentrated very, very close to the metal surface. So this is just like if you put a charge uh, on, a, on a metal sphere, the charge will all immediately um, go out to the very edges of that sphere. Or not immediately, it'll take a couple uh, femtoseconds, but it's very fast and the thickness that the charge is distributed over is very, very small, like nanometers or, or smaller. And then on the end side, let's say we've got a similar situation. We've got, as before, this depletion region. So because of the negative charges on the metal side, we need positive charges to counterbalance it on the 
on the end side uh, because of charge neutrality. And let's let's also say that no charges can move. So these mobile charges can't get over uh, to the end side because usually they'd want to, but we're gonna stop that from happening. We're gonna put a barrier here. So we're just gonna pretend that we can put a bunch of negative charges on one side and they're distributed over such a small space uh, that that space we're gonna just call that zero. Um, it's the, the depletion region, if you will, on the side of the metal is so absurdly small that we're gonna call it zero. And on the end side, we're gonna still call this region Xn. Well, what do we do in this, in this situation? Um, because it's not clear what the concentration of electrons is on this side. Um, it's essentially infinite. Uh, but remember, from the equation we calculated for xn, um, we saw that xn could be written independent um, of the concentration of uh, negative charges on the other side. So it's only dependent on this donor concentration nd. So this equation works for any um, one-sided junction. The subtlety here is this VBI. So remember, with the PN junction, we calculated VBI as just Na times Nd, or sorry, the, uh, I'm forgetting my manners, uh, the thermal voltage phi T times the natural log of Na Nd over Ni squared. But with this, it's not entirely clear what, she, what we should put. Uh, for VBI, because if Na, uh, if the charge of acceptors or the negative charge concentration is infinite, then would, it would appear that VBI is infinite. But that's that's obviously nonsense. Uh, and the answer here is that uh, we need more information. So one piece of information that will work is the charge or the voltage drop uh, that's dropped across this depletion region Xn. So instead of VBI, uh, we can erase that, we use delta V. So we need to know uh, from measurements from something else what this delta V is, but it'll work just the same. And the reason for that is that if you actually integrate the charge profile and then you find the electric field, um, so let's, we know we've got a, a negative charge here, and we're going to represent that as a delta function. If you don't know what a delta function is, it's basically just uh, a somewhat, an extremely useful, an extremely useful um, function that just represents an inf something of an infinite density, or that's, that's one way you can think of it. So if we've got a delta function on one side, and a bunch of positive charge on the other side. And so this is our charge profile. So this is Q. And delta functions are written as an upside down arrow. Uh, and this is distance x. Then the electric field is just the integral of the charge density divided by uh, the permittivity, but we don't really care about that. So it's going to be 0, 0, 0, and then it's going to um, jump down almost instantaneously to a negative value. And that negative value is gonna depend on how much charge is there. And then we're gonna integrate the positive side and it's gonna go up and up and up. And then the electric field's gonna be zero outside that. Um, but when we go to in integrate, when we go to find the voltage by integrating the electric field, and recall that this all comes from Gauss's law uh, the, the divergence of E is equal to the charge density divided by epsilon, or in one dimension, with the other dimensions assumed infinite, uh, the charge density divided by epsilon is equal to dA dx. So we can rearrange this and integrate and solve for the uh, potential, because we also know that E is just minus dV dx in one dimension. So that's, that's what we're doing here. So if we calculate the voltage, uh, then we need to integrate this. What we see is that within this x region, or within this uh, negative charge region, the integral is zero because we're integrating 
uh, we start integrating here at this point and then it goes up from zero and then downward slopes uh, like this so it's a, a half of a parabola basically and so the voltage drop across this region delta V across the region where we have all this negative charge whoop, all this negative charge that voltage drop is zero there is no voltage drop across this little teensy tiny um, charge region and the reason for that is because of this integral when we integrate the electric field the voltage drop across that region is zero so the entire voltage uh, voltage drop delta V is from this point from the top of this uh, of this curve I'm just gonna write it like this delta V so this is why uh, we can get away with this and in the future when we're analyzing MOSFETs we do know this delta V and so that's why it's useful to write um, the equation in terms of the the voltage drop across one side so I hope you find found this video interesting we've covered the PN uh, often called P plus N uh, one-sided diode and depletion region as well as the one-sided uh, metal uh, semiconductor junction and we just analyzed the electrostatics of this so we just analyzed the depletion region uh, but there's much more to be to be done on this topic and that's with uh, Schottky diodes and ohmic contacts so I uh, hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time